Okay, this is test number four. But I suppose what I should actually mention is why I'm doing this. The reason that I'm doing this is because I want to become a better speaker. I want to become a better communicator. I want to present from a standpoint of confidence. So the, what I'm saying to people in a, in a seminar or a workshop or a, a general speech is it, it, it comes across in a positive manner. It comes across, it, it comes across in a positive way. And so they can leave with something of value so that what I'm saying, it fills them with confidence. If I'm, if I'm telling them, standing up and saying, you've got to inspire others and be confident and I'm doing it from a position of a lack of confidence then in myself, then it's not going to inspire anyone else. If I can't inspire myself, then how can I inspire others? That's the concept of this. So I'm going to read this one this chapter, uh, sorry, this paragraph, and I'm just going to read it in my normal, my normal voice, the one that I would normally speak in, but I'm going to try and be expressive in it also, okay, I'm not even going to watch this one, I don't want to, I don't want to watch this one, I'm just going to do this, so watching it kind of is a bit off-putting, but Okay, so um, again, this is page 48. Sorry, this is not page 48, this is page 49. Okay, so here we go. Remember, human behavior is a result of the state we're in. If you've ever produced a successful result, you can reproduce it by taking the same mental and physical actions you did then. Before the 1984 Olympics, I worked with Michael O'Brien, a swimmer who competed in the 1500 freestyle. He had been practicing, but felt as if he were not really putting his all into gearing up to succeed. He developed a series of mental blocks that seemed to be limiting him. He had some fear about what success might mean, and this goal, and this, and sorry, and thus his goal was the bronze or maybe the silver medal. He was not favoured swimmer, not the favoured swimmer to win the gold. The favourite, George DiCarlo, had beaten Michael on several occasions. I spent an hour and a half with Michael and helped him to model his peak performance states. That is, to discover how he got himself into the most resourceful physiologies, what he had pictured what he said to himself and what he felt in the one match in which he'd beaten George DiCarlo. We began to break down what actions he took mentally and physically when he won matches. We linked the state he was in at these times to an automatic trigger, the sound of the starting gun firing. I found out that the one day he had beaten George DiCarlo He'd been listening to Huey Lewis and the news right before starting. So the day on, of the Olympic finals, he did everything the same. The same actions he had taken on the day he had won. Even listening to Huey Lewis moments beforehand. God bless Huey Lewis, eh? And he beat George DiCarlo and won the gold medal by a full six seconds. Oh yeah. 